Madonna's dead, and that's a good thing. Lorenzo's alive, and that's a bad thing. But now, the plan has to enter into phase two, overthrowing the government. If we can get the people of Florence to rise up against the Medici, we still stand a chance. Enter Jacopo de Pazzi, forefather of the Pazzi family, and Salviati, the Bishop of Pisa. It's Jacopo's job to rush through town, getting the people of Florence to rise up against the Medici. Right Salviati, instead, is going to storm the Plaza della Signoria with 30 mercenaries from Perugia, and they're going to either take hostage or kill every government minister that stands in their way. With these two things combined, Florence is ours. That's what was meant to happen. So Salviati is able to access the Palazzo della Signoria. And when they get in, he tells his mercenaries, all right, you guys wait for me in that chamber in the chancel room, okay? When you hear my signal, come out, and we're gonna start taking hostages and killing government ministers and bloody bloody blah. Bring the motherfucking rockets! In the meantime, he goes looking for Petrucci, the Gonfaloniere di Giustizia. The Gonfaloniere di Giustizia is basically like the Prime Minister. Now, back then, Florence was kind of a democracy. It was a republic, and the head of state was the Gonfaloniere di Giustizia. He finds him. What's up? He's like, oh, hi, Petrucci. It's, you know, Salviati, the Bishop of Pisa. Um, you know, I've got a message from the Pope. But I, we have to tell you, talk to you about... This. And Petrucci basically realizes that this guy's stalling, that there's something rotten in Denmark. He still doesn't know about the assassination plot. He just thinks that there's something not quite right and has him arrested and locked up preemptively. Salviati, in the meantime, calls out to his mercy. Hey, come on, I need your help. But guess what? The chancellery, where he placed his armed assistant, is a room that you can only open from the outside unless you have the key. And they didn't have the key. So those silly bastards basically locked themselves in. Cut to Jacopo. Jacopo is storming through town as planned trying to get the people to rise up. But when the people of Florence hear that the Pazzi have been involved in a plot to kill the Medici in the Duomo, they rise up, but not with Jacopo. They rise up against him because the people of Florence are actually quite fond of the Medici family. And at this point, we don't know whether they're both dead, whether one of them's dead, whether maybe they're both alive. We just don't know. We just know that there's been an assassination in the Duomo. When it comes out that Giuliano is dead, and Lorenzo has survived, that's when shit really hits the fan. The Signoria begin putting in draconian measures as of, like, now. Salviati, the Bishop of Pisa, gets executed pretty much there and then, taken out of the cell where he'd been locked up and thrown out of the window. Jacopo de Pazzi, they track him down, he gets hung. Francesco de Pazzi, caught, hung. Giovanni Battista da Montesecco, the priest, caught, killed. The mercenaries from Perugia, what do we do with them? They were all thrown from the windows of the Palazzo della Signoria. Splat, 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 it's raining men, hallelujah. But it didn't stop there, it didn't stop with the physical perpetrators of the plot. Lorenzo's wrath had no limits, okay? People being hung, people being torn to pieces in the streets without even being tried, literally just ripped to pieces. Minimum 80, maximum 100 people were killed in response to the death of Julian. So anyone involved with the Pazzi in any way whatsoever was either assassinated or in the best of cases, exiled or jailed for life. But again, there was one little stone left unturned. Bernardo Bandini, Baron Cengli. He gets away, he's one of the few that gets away. He goes first to Naples, then from Naples to Istanbul, and he goes into hiding for a year. And he thinks, okay, no one's gonna trap me out in Istanbul. Wrong. Lorenzo's political and business connections spread all throughout Europe, including parts of the Middle East. I got keys coming from overseas. And he got in a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Sultan, Mehmet II. So he's able to get Bernardo Bandini extradited back to Florence. They didn't even give him time to change his clothes. He was hung from the windows of the Bargello wearing Turkish clothing. This event would easily have gone forgotten if it wasn't for the fact that a young artist happened to be walking past that day, Leonardo da Vinci, who did this drawing. Now, notice there's all this writing on the drawing. Um, it's kind of funny because Leonardo's not describing the event. He's not saying, oh, how tragic to see someone get hung from the window of a palazzo. He doesn't care about that. You're used to seeing people hung and executed left, right and center in Florence. He's commenting on the guy's clothing because Leonardo at the time was in his 20s and we know from historical sources he was actually quite a dandy. So when he sees the guy wearing these Turkish garments, he's like, oh, wow, I want that. Where did he get that? That's cool. So it's basically like a fashion blog post that Leonardo's written and drawn. But anyway, corpses rot. 
Corpses decay, they turn to dust, memories fade, but no one can forget what happens to you when you f with the Medici. So what does Lorenzo do? He hires an artist to paint the effigies of the dead Pazzi on the Palazzo della Signoria, so etched into everyone's memories, people will remember how they ended and what they did. And who was the artist? Botticelli, who in the same period is painting the Primavera and the Venus, and all these images we associate with the sort of cliche idea of the Renaissance being this time of beauty, of art, of cultural enlightenment, and it kind of was. But the Renaissance has a double soul, it has a duality. Beauty, culture, art, enlightenment, bloody bloody blah, blah, and hardcore text shit. But anyway, from Lorenzo's point of view though, what was the aftermath of this? Well, this is using the words of Guicciardini, one of the more important Florentine historians of the time. He basically says this, the Pazzi conspiracy was a turning point for Lorenzo. His brother, Giuliano, who essentially was a rival, was killed. You know, he had to divide power, wealth, everything he had with Giuliano, but now he's gone. And his death gave him the pretext to wipe out all his rivals, solidifying his own power. In fact, it's after the Pazzi conspiracy that Lorenzo consolidates his role as the Lord of Florence. Before the conspiracy, there was something a bit dictatorial about Lorenzo that the Florentine didn't quite like, but now they embraced his dictatorship with open arms. So in a way, the death of his brother was the best thing that could have ever happened to him.